Aloha, welcome back to the Cyber Underground, where we dig deep to find out how cybersecurity touches all of our lives every day. Today we're going to talk about the deep web, the dark web, and the mysteriousness of what can't be found and then found on the deep web, mysteriously enough. And today we have a special guest star with us, Mr. Gordon Bruce, also known as Gordon the Tech Star. Welcome. Nice to be here. <laughs> since we're doing the dark, like, how you doing? Anyway, since we're doing the dark web, I thought I'd come incognito so they wouldn't know who, I, who it really is. Oh, yeah. But this I, is I shouldn't tough. have told them who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. I'm, yeah, you're so, blown. I'm blown. I'm done. That's it. It's done. So. All right, now, Gordon, you have a, a great show. That I, this is a spinoff of your awesome show. Yeah, this is Frasier after Cheers. That's right. I'm Frasier. I'm proud to be Frasier. Yeah. It's a good show. Yeah. Uh, you were the original Cheers or Hibachi Talk, and you just moved to 1 p.m., on Wednesday. Uh, 2 p.m. on Wednesday. 2 p.m. on Wednesday. 2 p.m. on Wednesday. And I'm taking your old slot as of the 19th. As of the 19th, you get the old um, 1 p.m. The 1 p.m. on Friday slot. Right. So right. have fun. It's all yours. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's ter- hey, you know, I, that, I like that slot. So, um, and I like shifting things around. So Wednesday's going to be interesting. It just messes up my Sunday because now I have to get the show ready on Sunday. So, but that's all. Yeah, you schedule a little off. Yeah. What's coming up next week for you? Um, oh, we got a uh, guy coming in um, talking about document management and a few other things like that. So we'll see. So document management got some holes in it. Always, uh, yeah, if you use Microsoft's tools, open to Active Directory, one of yep. the biggest holes in, uh, in the system. Tons of holes. <laughs> I've heard a lot so, about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Interesting it's one of the reasons stuff. why I got out of that business is just Patching the holes? Stuff, yeah, patching <laughs> the holes. The three ring binder holes. You're right, yeah. So we got, so we got that, that happening next week. So we're good. So next week on this show, we're going to be talking to um, somebody from HMSA, from the cyber group over okay. there at HMSA, and we get to learn how seriously they take uh, cybersecurity at HMSA, which is our Blue Cross Blue Shield vendor. That's, out here. Yeah, that's our man. And so and on um, our, this past show, we had um, Hawala Grevy was our um, uh, guest in the past show. And um, he, he does uh, HIPAA compliant email encryption and uh, HIPAA compliant document management and HIPAA compliant uh, forms. So have HMSA watch that show. It would oh. be a good one for them to watch. I will. Maybe they actually will learn something. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be kind. <laughs> I will be kind. They watch gentle. the show and say, sorry, we can't make it Yeah. <laughs> at the last minute. Actually, you know, I, I sent a list of about 15 questions, mm-hmm. and they said, well, we, we can actually answer the top three yeah. and nothing else. And nothing after that. <laughs> it, was like, it was like talking to the NSA. <laughs> the, big, the big guys. It's, it's challenging. You know, you, us doing these shows, it's challenging. You get the big guy, the corporate guys in here. And they want to see the script, and they want to see the, you know, what happens on every minute. And, we, and our shows don't work that way. Yeah, I wish they did. I wish I was more professional, but uh, I'm not Steve Uncle Bear. I can't pull it off. <laughs> well, my standard line says, "This is not CNN. This is not <laughs> CNN. This is how we do it. We That's do a good it. one. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself, so my audience knows who you are, oh. why you're the tech star. Oh, why I got the name the tech star. So, you know, I've been in the tech industry for 50 years. Wow. It's been a long time. 67. Did we have tech back then? Uh, well, we, was did, it tech? we, we did, uh, did not, actually kind of not. It was tech. <laughs> um, but there wasn't even a courses at, at school that had degrees. You could get a certificate. Oh. There was no degree courses or anything like that. And so and most of the classes were offered at night. No there curriculum nice dedicated to that. There was no that, curriculum. Yeah. They were like little add-ons because no one thought that there was going to be an industry. And how wrong can you get? Yeah, I know. I, I remember my dad saying, uh, this is a fad, these computer things. Yeah. This is going away. And um, that was in 1982? Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, no, no, they were already there. I yeah. mean, in, in, in 1967, when they put um, the first large IBM mainframe at the Corporation City of Toronto, they put it in a big glass facility right at the entrance of the of the city hall. So, oh, when you so walked everyone could in, see. You could yeah. see yeah. that they were now Ooh, you know, we're tech people, people yeah. tech people in behind this glass <laughs> wall and so on. So yeah. Yeah, I've just been in the tech industry a long time. Um, I got the Techstar handle when I when I did my eight years of service, community service with the city and county. So when when I got <laughs> you make it sound like it's part of your probation. I, well, you know, I've always I, everybody should do it. I think everybody should do um, probation. <laughs> yes, in government. <laughs> two years of probation in government. Instead of, you know, the draft was great, but I think two years in government um, to help pay for your education would be a great thing to do. 
um, for, for students to come out and, and do that. Um, that eight years I spent um, of my life in, um, in government as the director of IT for the city was a huge awakening. It didn't pay squat, but I tell you, it was a great, great Not a money awakening. Maker. Uh, got to know how government worked or doesn't work. Uh, I got to understand yeah. um, the ins, of, ins and outs of all the various um, divisions of government and things like that. So it, it was a great, a great period of time to, to do that work. Cause I got, so when, when it was announced that I was going to be the CIO, one of my buddies around town said, oh, now you're the tech star. Oh. And that, hand, that handle just, just stuck. stuck. Yeah. And that, that never went away. So, like, so that's, that's, my, that's my, uh, my shtick, and I'm going to stay with it. I, I like it better than maybe like Forrest Gump. And yeah, well, that, that would have been a terrible one. That would have been awful. Yeah. I don't know how that would do tech, though. <laughs> I think that one's rude. <laughs> well, tell us a, a little bit about uh, what you know about the deep web okay. and the dark web. The, and, the, and the upfront web. Yeah, well, and the upfront. Well, let's talk about the regular internet yeah, first. Yeah, the regular, Good point. Yeah, so you know, so the, this is an interesting um, juxtaposition, maybe is a good word for it. But if you think back, you know, when the, when the, the World Wide Web started to get its its goings, mm -hmm. and if you think before that, now when I was I was using the internet in the seventies, um, it was called Plato, P L A T O. That's back ARPANET. ARPANET, you yep, got it. Right. So that, I was using that back in those days, um, and it was not screens; it was like a teletype machine mm. that you more of on. a dumb terminal. Yeah, just yeah. a dumb. It wasn't even a terminal. It looked, like a, it looked like a typewriter. And so you would type things in, and then you get the stuff coming back. You know that chatter, chatter you hear like in the old movies, right. things like that. So you know, that was when it, when it all started. But you know when, um, and you know this better than me, um, when when the internet started to take off and the World Wide Web got right. formed, then you started getting to this, the internet. And I remember I was working for a company at the time, and I built a website for the company, and they said, we don't need this. Why do we need this? This isn't. This is. This is silly. Yeah, this, this is, is like superfluous. Silly. It doesn't. It's non sequitur. Why? It's not. Yeah. Gonna, what are we going to use this for, <laughs> right? And they're they're a large real estate company, you know. And so just think of where the real estate industry has gone is because as a result of the internet. Uh, yeah, everybody looks to the internet first, first when they're looking for a house. Sure. I mean, what's the first thing I do? I go to when I'm looking for something, I go to YouTube. And yep. I, I check there. That's my first search engine right now is YouTube, which is owned by Google or Alphabet or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah, I think it's Alphabet. Alphabet. Parent company, yeah. 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 So anyway, so you think, so that the, the, when we do a, a search on World Wide Web at, at Bing or Google or wherever, that's you're hitting that top layer that I'll call it the somewhat fresh layer of the internet. That's five percent. That's the fresh powder yeah. of the snow on the internet. So yeah. when you get responses back there, you're getting five percent of what's actually out there, because all because they filter it. I mean, they being uh, the the Googles and the Bings and so on. They filter that content to, to limit you from seeing other things that are in the deep and in the dark web. Well, websites do this too, right? Yeah. With a robot doc text file that they can add to their main directory that says exclude these directories. Yeah. But then people that are malware oriented, like black hats, mm -hmm. will ignore that and right. index you anyway. But Google doesn't do that. No. Right. So you only get the what people want you to you see. You only get what people want you to see and what they want you to see. Yeah. Because they right. are you know they, if you look at it, you know, it's all oh, the freedom of the internet. Well Google <laughs> can say what you can and cannot see. Now, um, Microsoft can say what you can and cannot see. Um, so they're doing their form of editing and filtering and things like that. So um, but there's a lot more to it, as you and I both know. I mean, when you right. get to the next level, there's a lot of things in the deep web. And the deep web, in a lot of ways, is um, uh, Department of Defense. Right. You know, safety for, for our nation. You know, all of those kinds of things. So it, that stuff, you don't go, when Google goes, oh, U.S. Air Force, they say, oh, let's show you all the bases, and let's do a Google map on it, and we'll show you all the plane routes and the layouts and all this kind of stuff. We'll go to every single directory on the website, and we'll fish out everybody's name, name and everybody's and, uh, rank. Who's ranked <laughs> and whatever. Thing. So, so there's all of that kind of stuff that's going to get stopped, and that's, 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 you know, that's the beauty of that layer. But you think 95% of what's on the web we do not see. That's deep. John Q. Public does not see. That's right. deep. That's the and deep so, web. And that, that, that deep side is kind of interesting. And so, but to get to the deep side, you have to have a different browser. You can't use Internet Explorer. You can't use um, Chrome. You can't use Firefox. Um, they, don't, they do the same kind of editing or filtering. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to take one like Tor. Right, right, and right. you know that one for sure. Tor, it's it's the most popular because it's probably one of the easiest to install. It's the one of the easiest right. to install. And if you go the Tor browser, which you can download, you can take Tor and go and download it. Now, don't. 
be careful with what you do. <laughs> now, once you, you know, once you download it, Pandora's you box. <laughs> will reap the rewards of what you've just created. So, um, but you can download the Tor browser, right? And um, and now that doesn't have the filtering that was there before. Now, the interesting thing about the Tor browser that was military grade. The military created Tor browser, hmm. and so um, with that went public. It became a 501c3. So the Tor browser is a 501c3 nonprofit, just like Think Tech, um, that people fund to keep it going. What interesting is, is 80% of the funding for the Tor browser comes from the U.S. government. What does that say? So about what does that Tor? say right, about <laughs> what Tor? Is, what is that telling us? <laughs> what is that telling us? And I just want to go like when a when a, um, a a missile is launched in North Korea and happens to crash, I go. Hmm. hmm. Remember Stuxnet? That's right. It, it makes you stop and <laughs> think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why would that explode right there? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that we're fighting these these battles now and, and, and such. Oh, World War III is going to start with cyber. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. If it hasn't cyber. already. Right. And we might not even know it. We might not even right. know it. That's what we don't know. But that's the other part about the deep web is the fact that, you know, we've all been hacked. Anyone sitting at home right now thinking that you have not been hacked? Uh, it's a dream. You are dreaming like you wouldn't <laughs> believe. I mean, you, once you can get into the deep web and once you get into the dark web, they can, we can find anything and everything we want about you. Now, the deep web also includes what a lot of people call uh, OSINT, which is open source intelligence, yeah. which is everything about you and I that's been on the grid and indexed on the deep web somewhere out there. And once you're on the deep web, you can find it all. I, I would imagine there's a there's a an index of my birth certificate somewhere. There may be an index of some um, uh, criminal record or something if, if someone thought was taken away. There could, all, all of that could still be uh, could sure still anything be, uh, anything indexed is forever. Right. You can't take it away. You cannot yeah. take it away. You can delete it off one server. It's on two other, but it's others. Bit, but it's on the others. Fifty others. Yeah. So so that so that's the the part about the deep web. So it's kind of fun kind of fun in some ways because I I use both the deep web and the regular web because I'll do, be doing some research and searching on something but want to see what happens when I go to the next to the to the Tor browser and be careful with my inquiry <laughs> <laughs> what I'm asking so it's kind of clear uh, and not misinterpret it so it's so a very politically correct wording it you have to be what, careful one letter off well or even just turning a couple of words around and, and all of a sudden it can be different mis results different results yeah. and misinterpret it and next thing you know <laughs> those kinds of things are happening so I, I do that in, from time to time just to see what other papers come up and that's one of the other things that's interesting is that you can do a, a a Google search on Bing or a Bing search on Google and get certain dot papers, right? Mm -hmm. Writing, writings. Right. I can do it in the deep web and I get others with more detail in it. Or even some things that are that are actually um, redacted um, documents that came from other locations. Not illegally, but they are out there, but not normally the kinds of things that the, the main browsers would put up. And unfortunately, uh, on the deep web, some people are in charge of servers where they post information and they have no idea it is a web server. And that file system they just dropped that file into is actually published somewhere on the deep web. Yep. And people can actually access this stuff. And that's where you get all these, these scanned documents or the old microfiche documents. Someone says, oh, I'll just hand them over to that file server. And it turns out to be an Apache web server and they didn't know it. Right. Now you're indexed forever. So, so a great example. So you may have someone who says, oh, every year I get my tax returns and all my files scanned in at the local shop down the street. That oh, and that's up. stored on the printer uh, yeah. and that guy's and, computer. At, and, yeah. and on their server, and then they say, then they give you the DVD, yeah. right? their <laughs> right. CD, whatever, say, here he is. Right. But all those documents, all of your documents just got put there, and if that particular um, server is exposed, they may end up in the deep web. And you, it doesn't have to be a server. Yep. So on the Internet of, of Things, especially, I don't, I don't want to name which kind of printer, but many printers have a hard drive inside mm -hmm. and a little file server and a web server that sits on that printer, especially the, the commercial grade ones, right. and you scan documents and it gets cached there. Right. And it stays until you wipe it out. And if you don't know it's there, you never wipe it out. And so your documents at wherever, I'm not going to say which tax place, but yeah. if you go to a tax place and they scan it, it's on that, and right. there's not a lot of security on those machines. Once you're inside the first layer of security in any network, that's an available resource. That's you right. can go that's get right. it. And that's that's why I tell everybody, you've been hacked. You don't, and <laughs> what, what, was, what was the latest one, just kind of digressing a little bit, so um, Orange, is the, Orange is the New Black, right. that TV series, yeah, yeah, the yeah. guy hacked the series. 
and, and put it up on the internet. So you can get that series now on the internet. He told Netflix, I won't put it up if you give me a, pay me a Bitcoin ransom. Yeah. They said no, and he put it up. So now they're going like, wait, how did, how did that get up there? Because we have all these security, the, the security stuff in place. It was some small graphic artist company that do the final little touch-ups on the on, on right, the, on right. the post-production post-production yeah. stuff. Yeah, do the little, little two-person shop. They got it off theirs. <laughs> so all you know, so you put everything in place, but that one little thing where you handed it over to the guy down around the corner. And it's always a human. Oh yeah. Ninety percent of the time, it's a human yeah. first. Yeah, it's a human first. We got to take a forty-second break, so we'll be back very soon. Uh, Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to youtube.com, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens, and this is the tech czar Gordon with me here talking about the dark web right now. We, we went through the regular web, the deep web, and now we're into a portion of the deep web called the dark, the web. dark web. Right. right. And uh, we, we talked about Tor. Right. There's a couple other ways to get to this place, mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk about the, the dangers and freedoms related to these other ways. Uh, Freenet is one of them. Uh, Freenet is another uh, application you can install on your computer, you can get to the dark web. Uh, here's the caveat. Uh, with Freenet, Freenet and another one called I2P, uh, a portion of files that are stored on the dark web will be encrypted and stored on your hard drive. Yeah. You allow that to happen. Um, now it's encrypted, so the theory is if you get caught with those files there, it's encrypted, you never knew what they were. I'm not sure that would stand up in court, so I'd, I'm really not yeah. into making that kind of a risk in my life. That, that's not a good risk assessment in, in my uh, opinion. I would never use those personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I stick to Tor. Now there's another one that I kind of like, and you can use Tor on this other one. This is Tails. Yes, I was reading about that just today <laughs> for this show. <laughs> Tails has been around for a little while. It's becoming more and more popular. You can run the whole thing off a USB drive, yeah. and then you can put Tor on it, and you can make it persistent, which means it's a mini computer and it has storage with it and will save your changes every time you take it down. The thing is, like on my MacBook Pro here, I can put this Tails USB drive into my USB port and boot to that Tails drive right. as the entire operating system and none of my other computer hard drive is even touched or indexed or mapped or anything. I'm, I'm in my own little bubble. And then I go browse the web and they can hack away but it doesn't affect my personal files. Yeah, they're just hacking away at a device. Right. They just I, I'm, I'm basically part of the Internet of Things and I can browse that way. So Tails is, is not the easiest thing to install on a USB drive. You have to make it bootable, and then you have to put this OS on there. But there's plenty of sites that will step you through each part of the process until you get the final product. And if you actually do that, it's nice to have that in your pocket. I mean, if you go to a hotel, uh, a business center at a hotel, you can boot to the USB drive and not have to chance using their Wi-Fi and their, their Wi-Fi, internet. which is why I don't think it's good. I mean, <laughs> just, think of the t just think of the television, right? The television <laughs> is already cooked up to their um, payment processing system. <laughs> right, so you go, you go in there. You, That's right. You can just hack into that TV and get to their payment processing and system. And get to people's credit cards. Get their credit card. Oh yeah. So you know what? I can book movies on your credit card. That's right. Actually, I can book movies for you on your credit card that you never knew you were going to watch. What, what was that hack going on just a little while ago, where uh, people were calling in and saying that uh, they're the front desk? And they mm -hmm. want you to verify some information yep. because your, your billing is not going through. So people confirm their credit card and their CCV number on the back and their name and their zip code and all that to a random person on the phone because they spoofed the phone number as being from yep. the hotel front right. desk. It's that easy. 
hotels are wide open. They're, they're, we've had, we've had a, um, someone in the tourism industry on, the, on our show talking about the hotels and how they are, they are one of the largest exposed entities because of all the services they try to provide, right? They're providing those services, you know, the, the smart TV, the wireless access, the easy checkout. Um, you know, ordering food online, you know, all this kind of stuff, and that just opens up all of the, all the kinds well, of things. Convenience the negates security. Yeah, I mean, you can't. You have to. It's a delicate balancing act. Right? You can't have yeah, fully tough, both. Right. You can't lock tough. yourself away, but that if you want convenience, you have to take some of the risk. What are you going to do? It's, it, I know. So that's why I don't stay in hotels. <laughs> right. What's hiding on the dark web? Okay. Well, so so the dark web is kind of interesting, and I, I, I and this is my personal opinion. Like the dark web is is a bad place. But it's not as big as, as the media has made it. Hmm. I think the media, um, and why is the dark web such a popular media thing? Is because it's it's media. It's 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 got well, it's not a story unless it. it's big. It's, it's like it's, it's you know it's, it does all these kind of great crazy things. I mean, there's so there's one you know one of the famous ones is, is Silk Road. Now Silk sure. Road was um, um, a, a drug distributor, so you could go online and you could purchase your illegal drugs online and then they would be shipped to your home or wherever um, <laughs> after you, you paid the fees and, and so Now the thing about Silk Road that, that made it interesting is the fact that their customer service was ranked one of the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you go, hey, wait, wait a minute, I'm doing an illegal business of selling illegal drugs you around have the customer world service, baby. and my customer <laughs> service is ranked, is ranked up there with Amazon and eBay except better. Oh my God. And because they had all the blog, they had these whole blog things, right? So, so, oh yeah, I got this, it said what it was, it came in the three days it was to be delivered. You know, so, and anytime someone did something bad, they, fall, they actually followed up, Silk Road actually followed up with them to find out what they did wrong. To, well, to, these to are actual this. business people, yeah. but they see the greatest profit in something that's illicit. It's something that's illicit. So, and the U.S. government got wind of it and started looking it. Now, the guy that it's interesting. The guy that founded um, Silk Road, um, his his sentence um, is life in prison without parole. That's the, one of the strongest sentences ever given to someone for doing something like like that. And, and the reason they did, he, they, he hit three, three things. He hit cyber, he hit uh, drugs, and he was using the U.S. Postal Service to distribute uh, the, his medical products. So he got, he got the, and they, I think, you know, they, they really nailed him. I mean, Without so. parole. What? Yet every, every couple of years, Charles Manson is in the news because he's up for parole. That's right. So mm. you go figure that one out. No, so I got to figure that one out. La Bianca versus uh, yeah, Silk Road. Hmm. So so he he got he got nailed um, pretty damn good on that one. Now there's some, one another one that's out there, and this one's never been proven or disproven. Uh, you can actually hire a hitman. Oh, the assassin the assa market. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can go in there and you can actually order a hitman. Supposedly. Okay, no one's, no one's proved it or disproved it. Right, we've never gone to prove this. I'm not going to go ever. Over, we've over. never done the research. But it's, to average price is about 10 grand. I, okay, again, I've only heard this, <laughs> that it's crowdfunded. That's also... You can get a lot of people saying, that guy needs to go. Yeah, and, and, crowdfund and they'll, and they'll an do assassination. crowdfunding and they'll use Bitcoin wow. or cryptocurrency to do... Um, of a form of payment. So careful who you piss off. Piss off. Wow. So you know that that's kind of an interesting. And then you get to some. There's some real sicko, you know, stuff out there. Surely the not. Human being is a no. is a terrible thing. <laughs> um, and so and that's the ones where you got to be real careful because by accident when you're in the deep web you could you could get pulled over to that side where you don't want to get pulled over. Those links are included in the legitimate links that that's you're looking right. for. And, that's so, right. and you don't know by looking at them because of the way that they're displayed, whether they're as legit as as you were hoping they are. This was part of my ethical hacking class. Mm -hmm. I had them go onto the dark web. We installed Tor on Kali. And uh, we did a virtual machine. And we isolated it from the host machine. So they were safe. And I said, I want you to go find the website to an activist or a whistleblower. Right. They're going to be on the deep web somewhere. They're probably on the dark web. I want you to find them. Edward Snowden's there. Yeah. Go, go, go find those people and see what else you find on the way. And the reports they gave me were stunning. Some of the things they found, I mean, it put some of the kids in it's, shock. It's pretty creepy. <laughs> it, 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 it is pretty creepy. Yeah. Now, now there, there's also a positive side to the dark web, mm. which I find was very interesting. Is okay. that many of the media have um, uh, whistleblower sites in the dark web, 
where you can go in and if you've, gonna, if you've got someone that you want to do a whistleblow on, you can drop your documents or whatever it is that you want to do into their sites that you, you will not be tracked because of the way you've come in through Tor. They don't know it's you. No one will ever know it's you. And you've just done a, you've done a whistleblower on somebody and just dropped it into the Washington Post, New York Times, LA Times, New York Times, and dropped it in there. So they're using the dark web to help them to get news and protecting their sources because they can say, it came from an anonymous source and I have no way of knowing who they are. But you could follow up by getting multiple sources from the same place. Right. I don't know how valid that is or if that would ever stand up to well, real scrutiny. if you think about... Um, it's a good source, though. If I'm a journalist, I'd be looking there. Yeah, right. you're, you're, it's, it's, it's a source, right? It's where right. You're gonna, it's, it starts, it raises the flag, and then you decide whether or not you want to take it to the next level. So it's kind of like Watergate, right? Okay, we should maybe investigate this further. Or it's like... I'm hoping for another Watergate. Well, I thought we had that with Hillary, you know, since from a technical mm, standpoint. I'm thinking that there's something bigger on the horizon. Yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah. So that's that's another part that's in that's in the it's, it's in the dark web that I find intriguing because it's being used for, or attempted to be used for positive reasons. So, um, but again, I would I would just caution people that you know, when you go, if you decide you want to load the Tor browser or whatever you want to do, just be careful when you're in there. Tor's okay. Now, the, the way it works, though, is that you have a number of uh, hosted servers that are randomized. Uh, you get an encrypted link to the first host, an entry point, into the network. You're bounced around randomly. Your packets are bounced, r bounced around. And then when you exit to your final destination, from your exit point of the Tor node to your destination, you are unencrypted. So even if you're on the Tor network, you should go to an HTTPS site mm -hmm. for that final encryption security. Otherwise, from the exit node to your destination, you're exposed. And by the way, everybody, you're exposed anyway. It's just going to happen. Uh, every device out there on the internet tracks a little bit of your activity and keeps a little bit of your information in cache or uh, router tables. Um, uh, if you go through a Bastion host, those things can keep cached files for yep. quite some time. Yep. You smart leave TV. Smart TV. <laughs> you lose footprints no matter where you go. Uh, if someone wants to dedicate the resources to find you, they'll find you. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's no anonymous. So anymore. just think, if you walked into a department store and they've got cameras, they got you. Yeah, they got, that's it. You're done. You're, 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 they got, you're, you're already on there. Uh, with facial recognition and all the things that are available today, I mean, you're there. So, I mean, maybe we should all be wearing burkas. I don't. You know, I how do we don't, stay safe? How do you? Say, let's, I, let's take thirty seconds to just say, how do we stay safe? How do you stay safe on, on the you, on the dark web? It's like anything. Well, first of all, to, to stay safe on the dark web, just don't go to the dark web. That's the first tip. That's the first tip. Right? The second, if you want to go to the deep web, there has to deep web. There has to be a real, un, you know, compelling reason. Right. Real compelling reason, and if maybe you're doing research or you're you're, you're in, in other Stay areas. Stay off the bad sites. Yeah, because people can track you. You're right. Don't don't even enlarge your browser to the maximum width, because then people know your maximum screen resolution, and they can see how many times and you come back. They'll do keyloggers on you and all that wonderful stuff. Well, we're so, going to have to wrap this up. Okay. This is so interesting. I want to do a whole series of these shows Perfect. on the dark web where we really get into the nitty gritty and tell people what's really out there and show them how dangerous this really is. Thank yeah. you for being on the show. My Don't pleasure. forget to watch Hibachi Talk. It's on uh, Wednesdays at 2 p.m., right? That's Wednesday right. Wednesday at 2 p.m. and come back here next Friday at 5 p.m. The following Friday and every other Friday will be at 1 p.m. Aloha, everybody.